Where is it that the church teaches that someone cannot have explicit faith and yet be saved? And has the church developed its understanding of this? Well, when we look, for example, in Lumen Gentium, paragraph 16 of the Second Vatican Council, uh, we see the church articulate that it is possible for those, it says possible for those who have no knowledge of Christ or his church to still be saved if they are uh, following the revelation that God has given them primarily in, in nature and in conscience. Right. So the question is, does this person have is what has kept them from God some kind of an invincible ignorance, something mm-hmm. that they cannot overcome. Now, if it's something they could have overcome by investigating the matter and giving it serious thought, and they cavalierly dismissed it because they feel there are more important things in life than whatever God is, that may not bode well for them in the next life. Mm-hmm. But if it's something they're an honest seeker about and they're trying to find, uh, then I do believe God will eventually reveal themselves to this person. Uh, but it, it's also possible that a person could have other kinds of cognitive defects mm-hmm. that prevent them from coming to know God. The Catechism even talks about how one thing that can create vincible ignorance in atheists uh, are the examples of Christians. Mm-hmm. The Catechism says that sometimes Christians are poor examples of the faith, they teach it improperly and present a poor example of it that others don't want to yeah. have anything yeah. to do with whatsoever. Yep. And so that would be yeah, if you're, that would if be you're taken a Jew into raised in Nazi Germany and your only experience of Christ is that of the Third Reich. Yeah, or if you're example. a Jew living in the, the Middle Ages and yeah. you're being charged with blood libel mm-hmm. and uh, you're you're consigned to a to a ghetto. A ghetto yeah. But I would say that this the understanding that non Christians can be saved is not a unique one that's modern. I think you go back to like Pope Gregory the Great, he talks about how there is no one who is kept from receiving the the fruits of of the atonement of Christ's death on the cross. This is something to benefit everyone. Now, as the church articulated this principle, uh, there is no salvation outside of the church. It was primarily understood to mean that those who have come to know what the church is and reject it, there is nothing else that is going to save them. And so it's directed at uh, Jews or pagans uh, or even Muslims who have encountered Christians who have uh, you know, interacted with the faith and have, have rejected, there's nothing else to provide them salvation. God himself, and it seems paragraph 1257 of the Catechism, says that this salvation is bound to the sacraments, spe- mm-hmm. specifically baptism, but God himself is not bound by those things. Right. And so God is able to be merciful towards people and take an understanding of whatever epistemic position he has placed them in. Okay. But then the church came to see an understanding that there, there were people like in the New World, Native Americans, who could not possibly have, not what our Mormon friends notwithstanding, <laughs> yeah. uh, could not, who believe that Jesus appeared to the Native Americans, right. that's a whole different topic to talk about, could not have possibly known God. Mm-hmm. And, yet, uh, and, and yet I would say that it would, it would just seem to me to be such an, an injustice for it, it would be similar to the Calvinist doctrine of double predestination, hmm. where That's interesting. God decides who goes to heaven and who goes to hell. And God has made it the case that certain people, no matter what decision they make in this life, will be consigned to hell. I would say that's really not that far from double predestination, where yeah. God decides. Uh, now, all Christians believe in <clears throat> predestination. Right. The Bible talks about it. Right. And in paragraph 600 of the Catechism, it says that God, all moments of time are known to God uh, in his immediacy, but he, God is able to make our free choice as a part of his predestined plan. Mm. That's the essence of what paragraph 600 of the Catechism says. Mm. And so the point being what the church teaches on predestination is more what you can't believe. You just can't believe that God doesn't know the future. Mm-hmm. He is omniscient. But you can't believe that we don't have free will. Mm-hmm. God knows the future. He has chosen us. Mm-hmm. He's given us grace. We did not choose him. He I chose like that. us. That's a great way to put it. He's but, chosen yeah. us, but we also say yes to him. Right. It's not, we, we were not just, we're not dragged kicking and screaming. We're not dragged into the, the kingdom. We say yes to him. And sometimes we say no, and we got to right. come back and say yes again. Uh, but so God, if, if, yeah. so, I mean, the Thomistic view, and I guess the Catholic view is if we go to heaven, we have no one to thank but God. If we go to hell, we have no one to thank but ourselves. Right. And so when it comes to how free will and predestination work together in God's foreknowledge and free will, that's where Catholics, there's disagreement. Yeah. You'll have people who have the Thomistic understanding of predestination, which is 
very, very close to Calvinism, yeah. but important in important respects. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you have more views down the line like uh, Molinism, the Jesuit right. priest Luis Molina, who right. says that God gave uh, sufficient grace to people for them to be saved, but the grace that he's given to people, who that he chooses, he chooses those that he knows in his counterfactual foreknowledge <laughs> will say yes right. if he were to offer them Fair enough. salvation. And of course, and then enough. Catholics can disagree among yeah. themselves on those, on those things. And I'm not even fully settled. I lean towards Molinism, but I'm, I'm not completely settled on the issue. But the, the point is we have uh, with, with predestination that God has this plan for us, but it includes our free choices right. within that plan. How do we get to predestination? We were talking about the hiddenness of God. Um, and there's people who don't know, but to say like, okay, right. God has made it so that they're born. No chance of hearing the gospel. I can't accept the idea that God would make it the case that someone could exist and there is not a single choice they could have ever made in this life. There's not a single choice they could have ever made in this life to avoid being separated from God for all eternity. Uh, that to mm. me would seem to be right. uh, very, very yeah, if unjust. A ca if a Catholic is sort of disgusted at the kind of Calvinistic idea that God can predestine someone to hell, then they, it, as you say, it doesn't seem too far off to say people here in the new world had no chance of hearing the gospel. In a sense, he has predestined them to hell, if you want to say, strictly speaking. If he's given them no opportunity to make a decision, whether it's to recognize his existence in nature or to follow the revelation right. he's given them to conscience. And you go back, I mean, for great, you go back to Romans chapter 2, Romans yep. 2, 14 through 16. St. Paul says, uh, even though the Gentiles don't have the Mosaic law written on stone, right. they have the law written on their hearts, mm -hmm. and God will judge them by their conscience which will either accuse or excuse them on that day. Yeah. So I believe there's, there's yeah, quite yeah. a principle to show that God reveals himself to different people in different ways. But I think at the end of the day for us, for you and I, who, who go to mass, who have the sacraments, who have so many resources available to us for our spiritual growth, it really leaves us without excuse. No, yeah, totally. I mean, that's, so we should pray for people's salvation and we should evangelize. Yeah. So sometimes people will say to me, well, if you think that people can be saved if they're never evangelized. Let's just not evangelize. You're, you're just giving them a chance to reject God, yeah. right? And I would say here, well, no, I'm saying a possibility is not the same as a probability. Mm -hmm. Just because yes. it's possible these people can be saved, Doesn't it's not a guarantee. Mean, yeah. It could be that we still live in a sinful world where a person can be ensnared by sin mm -hmm. and choose to flee from the good. I mean, it's still so you're very in a much, possible. You're in a much better place, generally speaking, if you've heard the gospel proclaimed to you, you've been baptized and accepted it, yes. than if you've never heard it at all. Well, especially if you're baptized and you've accepted it, because mm. upon being baptized, you're uh, pure and undefiled. All The stain of any sin, original or actual, has been removed. There's mm -hmm. nothing to hinder you from being entered in the kingdom of God immediately after baptism. Now Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you will absolutely love the full interview. So click right there to enjoy the whole thing. Also, a big thanks to these groups who made that interview possible. Learn more in the show notes below about these guys. They're absolutely incredible and honored to have them as sponsors. Oh, and also, if you haven't subscribed yet, click subscribe and then that bell button. That way, YouTube will be forced to let you know when we put out more content.